In today's racing scene, there's certainly no shortage of radical turbo cars that require a bump box to build enough boost to stage. But why in the world am I putting a bump box on a naturally aspirated index car? Today I'm not only going to answer that question, but I'm going to show you three simple ways to do it without breaking the bank. Let's start with answering why. I just wrapped up a year of 650 index racing, which consists of about one race a month and usually one to two test sessions a month for me. The series runs on an instant green tree. If you've never done that, it presents a couple challenges. One, your ability to win races really hinges on how fast you and your car can react when the light turns green. Two, you don't have much time to get staged and on the trans brake before the light goes green. One more caveat, deep staging is sometimes allowed but certainly not honored. My best reaction times were in the high 480s to low 510s, with the car being about 280 of the reaction time and me being somewhere between 190 and 220, depending on the day. Research that I've done says that a well set up car and a great driver can go red on a 400 tree. So if I encounter someone like that, they immediately have a tenth on me, resulting in almost certain elimination. Anyway, back to the question, why are we going to add a bump box to a naturally aspirated index car? Number one, to simplify the staging process. To be able to get into the staging gate on the trans brake on the two step, ready to go. Number two, I'm hoping to be able to stage a little bit deeper. Not deep enough to unlight the top bulb, but deep enough to improve reaction time. First setup is probably the simplest. It'll work for anybody. It's got this little timer from the timer shop. It's in the description. Solid state relay also in the description and some kind of momentary switch. For sanity's sake, I've got this wired up to make sure that I have the timer configured right. I'm gonna make a short separate video on how to configure the timer to do this stuff. Right now, you see the lights on. That's assuming you were in the car with the trans brake button pushed. This little momentary switch is representing the bump box. So uh, I've got it set for a tenth of a second interrupt. So that should go out for a tenth of a second when I hit this button. Initial thoughts on the timer setup, it's a little bit rough. Uh, we turned it pretty much all the way down and it was still a little bit rougher than I would like it to be. Uh, I think because of the way it works, by completely interrupting the trans brake signal, uh, it's going to be a little rougher than some of the other options out there. Uh, pros of it is pretty cheap, you know, I think probably 70 bucks even with the Universal Programmer uh, will cover everything you need to do that one and you don't need a holly to use it so that one's an option for anybody cons uh, it's like I said it's a little bit rough and it's not infinitely flexible if you had a high power car I don't think you could turn it down far enough to work well next up I'm gonna set up the holly HP uh, the only real thing that you need is a momentary switch and I'm going to keep the solid state relay in the equation. Uh, it works a little different. Uh, it works on kind of like the duty cycle of the solenoid and pulse width modulation so it should be easier to smooth it out and make it a little less abrupt. So I'll show you how to set all of this stuff up and at least get it in the ballpark for you to get it on the car and give it a shot. Uh, open up the IO ICF and add an input that is a 20 volt and call that something like bump then go to your outputs and add an output that is pulse width, pulse width modulation negative I just call that bump PWM uh, click the configure button uh, add one switched input trigger and that will be your your two-step rev limiter rev limiter one probably it is for me anyway uh, once you get that done set your type to fixed impulse with modulation frequency somewhere around 16 duty cycle your x-axis should be rpm and your y-axis will be the boost which will be 
or I'm sorry, a uh, bump, and that will be the voltage. So once you get that done, you want to go in and set values for anything that we'll consider a, a voltage signal, somewhere probably around 9 or 10. So anything below that, you want to be 100, and anything up here, that's where it's actually modulating the, the amount uh, that's going to the trans brake. So up there, I, I'm, I think I'm going to start with 70, and then we'll just go from there, depending on the behavior of the car. So basically, the way this works, once it passes that voltage, it's going to start, it's going to start bumping. So now we're going to assign those uh, inputs and outputs to pins. So you'll have to play it by ear on what you have open. And save your global file and put it in your car and complete the wiring and you're good to go. Alright, the first attempt with the Holly was a little bit rough. I'm going to turn the duty cycle up. Um, one other thing you might notice is the holly will continue to bump as long as you hold the button, whereas the timer was a one-shot thing. If you wanted to bump multiple times, you had to hit it multiple times. We're going to turn up the duty cycle to 80% and see how that affects things. with the smoothness of the Holly set up now that I've got the duty cycle dialed in. The only thing I don't like about the Holly is it is dependent on how long you hold your finger on the button. Now what I'm going to do as the final scenario is implement the timer with the Holly so that when I push the button it, it basically engages for a, a set amount of time. So I should get the best of both worlds. I'll get the smooth engagement and I'll also get a set bump. If you measure the wheel at about two inches high, which is about where the beams are usually. It's about 13.8. So with a few calculations, I basically figured once you get the pre-stage bulb lit, you probably want to roll about 11 inches forward and that should have you fully staged relatively deep. Plus the Holly setup uh, has given me vastly different results per time I try it. So I'm going to play with it a little more, but there's the high, chances are high that I'm going to take the timer out of the equation and just go back to the Holly. Um, so your results may vary, but that, those are mine. There's drawings throughout the video to show you how to wire this stuff up. Use them as reference only and know what you're doing. I'm not going to be responsible for you tearing up your car however you may do it but they are a good starting point for you to get your car set up hopefully this was useful if it was please like and subscribe and as always we appreciate you watching